What's up guys? Today we're going to talk about your first saltwater boat and the necessities that you need on your boat. Now this is my first saltwater boat and let me tell you why I chose this boat. I chose it because it's 18.5 foot long and it's a bay boat. I did not want to get an offshore boat, my very first saltwater boat, and just run offshore. Now, I have, I do have boating experience. I used to fish bass tournaments with my dad. So I've been boating my entire life. I've drove boats before, um, but offshore is a different ball game. Now, my dad used to have an 18.5 foot Cobia with a 115 Yamaha on it, and we did go offshore, but I went offshore with him. So I have a little bit of experience with going offshore prior to buying this boat, but I didn't want to go out and buy an offshore boat and just run offshore by myself with no real offshore experience so let me tell you why we got this boat i didn't want to skiff i wanted something with a v-hole you see this has got a v-hole that way i can get out there if it's a little choppy and break the waves whenever i'm going offshore it's 18 and a half foot long so as long as it's under two to three foot waves in the gulf i should be okay out there um, it can get nasty quick though you really have to watch the weather if you're planning on going offshore in a smaller boat <laughs> You gotta check the wind and you gotta check if there's any fronts coming through. If there's a front coming through later in the day, you don't wanna go offshore in a smaller boat because that front may come through early. You never know. And you get caught out there in that front and you're in a smaller boat, you're in trouble. That's why it's always a good idea to have CETO or Boat US or somebody that you can call to come get you if you are in trouble. But they may not be able to get there fast enough, so you need to have your own safety measures. We'll talk about that in a minute. Now let's talk about the things you need on the boat. Of course you need life jackets. You need one life jacket for every person in the boat. You're also gonna need a throw pad. So if somebody falls over real quick, you can throw it out, um, something that floats that they can grab onto. You see this boat does have a trolling motor on it. Trolling motor wasn't a big deal for me. The only time I've ever used my trolling motor is to help get me unhung off a reef when my anchor got hung, the other time is whenever I go bass fishing. So I don't really use the trolling motor a lot. I don't do a whole lot of shallow, uh, shallow water. I bought this boat and I bought it with the purpose of doing some bay fishing. And after my third trip, I went offshore. Haven't done inshore fishing since. You're gonna need a fire extinguisher. By law, you have to have a fire extinguisher in your boat. You're gonna need an anchor. Now the reason this anchor's sitting out like this is because last time we were out, I lost my anchor on the reef, so I had to get another one. So I, I just haven't put this one in the boat yet to go back offshore. It's always a good idea to have two batteries. You see here, I've got two batteries. One is my cranking battery, and then the other is my trolling motor battery. But if you ever get out there, and your battery fails, you wanna have a backup battery. So if my cranking battery fails on me, I can take my trolling motor battery, switch it over, I can still crank that engine up and get back in. If you're going any kind of saltwater fishing, I don't care if it's inshore or offshore, you need a radio. Now this is a Cobra radio. I forget what model it is, but I got it online for about 130 bucks. And then I have an eight foot antenna right here. So I've been out 40 miles offshore before and been able to pick up the Coast Guard I might have to last resort to it. That antenna and that radio works great. Now, I've also got a fish finder. You have to have a fish finder if you're doing um, deeper water fishing. You can see that blue stuff right there. That's coral. That's live coral. And then you can see it. This is the um, chirp sonar, and this is the down imaging here. You can see those little bitty things coming up off the bottom right there. That's the live coral. It's not really necessary for trout fishing. I mean, if you're doing inshore stuff, but it is helpful. It keeps you from running on sandbars, oyster bars, and stuff like that. 
but another reason why I got this hummingbird is because I have it the hummingbird has a GPS in it and I have it connected to my radio and you can see my radio here has a distress button so I had to solder the wires from this to this and buy a special kit so now this has a GPS coordinates on it and it has a thing called digital selective calling so I can call anybody I want to and send them my location immediately with the digital selecting calling option but that distress button if you hit that distress button it immediately sends your stuff all your information your name your location and everything directly to the Coast Guard and then they're probably gonna try to call you then they're gonna come look for you you have to have a, a boat US membership or a towboat US membership in order to get your boat registered so you can use that feature though gotta have a cooler to keep your drinks in and stuff now of course I use my yak cooler to keep my drinks in I use this cooler to keep the fish in you want a gaff you want to have a gaff on your boat you get a big fish, a big kingfish or something up next to the boat, something with teeth, um, big cobia, anything big, you want to be able to stick that gaff in it and pull it in the boat real quick. Now, these are some add-ons. These are some uh, rod holders that I put in here because I have like 100 rods and I never have enough rod holders. I put some on this side and some on that side. This is just Velcro right here. And this is some wood that I painted. And then I screwed these rod holders into the wood and glued the Velcro to it and then glued the Velcro to the boat. I've had them now for about six months. They've held up great. I also added these rod holders on here. Now, I use these for trolling, but if you're trolling with these rod holders like this, make sure you have your drag loose because if a big, big fish comes up and you got your drag tight, they're going to pop those right off the boat. I've got four of them. I've got one here, I've got one here, and then I've got one here and one there. Now let's talk about some other little modifications I've made on my boat. Now you see this is my battery box here. This is a cutting board. Take it and put a bunch of slits in it, causing it to bleed more. Track sharp, a lot better. You just take your blade, run it down the fish, put a bunch of slits in the side of it. I screwed this cutting board onto the battery box and then I put a little slit in the cutting board for my knife. These are some brackets that I put right here to support the cutting board. And I also have a thing right here that I keep extra tackle in and I just slide it under it out the way. I got me some little baskets I put on the back there to keep my plugs and other stuff in. Um, something's rolling around, weights or whatever, I can just throw it in there and deal with it later that day. I also have added a little bit of um, fencing right here. Cheap stuff. That way I can hide stuff under here. See, I got my life jackets under here, so they're really easy to pull out. This way I can stick stuff under there, and it won't be falling all out in my feet down there. You always want to keep you a toolkit on the boat. You need some extra wrenches, pliers. You want some extra fuses in case you blow a fuse. I don't know how many times I've seen people out there blow a fuse in their um, fish finder need another fuse. But when you really get in trouble, it's if you blow the main power fuse to the engine and you don't have a spare. Then you're stuck out there and you're at the other fishermen's will if they're willing to help you or the Coast Guard or whoever you can get a hold of. There's another little modification I made here. This is just a CD case binder I got zipped up. I got my sunscreen and stuff that I keep in there. These are my plier holders. You can see the pliers aren't in them right now. I just got them zip tied to here. I also have a 12 volt charging outlet that I just Velcroed to the top because I didn't want to put screws in there. You need a compass. Now, this thing has a compass and GPS in it, but if this fails, you need a backup compass because you never know what happens. The fuse could blow in this, so you need some kind of backup compass. You also have to have lights on your boat. It's regulation that you have to have lights on your boat. You need a front light, and you need this light, a, a big light. To get. This is actually the front light up here. I just have it stuck right there for now. But you need that one that goes up there, and then you need a taller one. Now I want to point out that I have a spotlight on my boat and I got this from Walmart. They're, they make them to go on the front of trucks, but let me tell you why I have that light. It was getting dark and we kind of was late coming in because we was catching a bunch of fish and it was got pitch black dark on us and we couldn't see the channel, couldn't see anything, didn't have any lights on us. So it was really scary um, and the wind picked up. We, I mean, we was close. We was in the channel, but it was low tide and I couldn't see to stay in the channel. So it was just really stressful. So I, I said, if this ever happens again, I gotta be prepared. And I went out and got a spotlight. That way, if I'm coming in, I can see the channels at night because they're not always lit up depending on where you go. Now let's talk about the trailer for the boat for a minute. 
one thing you want to get is an aluminum trailer now you see this boat has a galvanized trailer I will never buy another galvanized trailer again whenever we got this trailer it had some rust on it we had to take and cut the brackets off the bottom put new boards on it we had to strip the whole trailer down and get rust remover we had to buff the rust off a of wire it was a, it was a job so then after we did put new clamps on here you can see there's the clamps right there put new boards new fenders on there we basically redid the whole trailer um, went to the hardware store and bought some galvanized paint that was like the highest percentage of galvanized that you can buy and we sprayed the whole trailer down with that galvanized paint and it's still got spots where it's starting to rust on it so if you guys are looking for a boat look for one with an aluminum trailer we got this little thing on the back here dive platform getting in and out of the boat it's, it's helpful but i've never used it i don't go swimming when i'm offshore fishing because i see too many sharks out there come up close to the boat this is a 90 horsepower mercury motor it'll run this boat about 32 miles an hour i normally don't run at top speed though and then i've got a yak cooler sticker on your motor if you're gonna get a boat you gotta get a yak cooler sticker now let's talk about the motor and a little maintenance real quick hi ah, ants ah! all right ants you always want to crank your motor up in the yard before you go to make sure it's running smooth and everything i don't know how many guys i've seen take their boats down there they drive all the way to the coast they put the boat in and then it won't crank they didn't crank it up in the yard before they left one other thing i want to talk to you about the motor we disconnected the oil injector on this motor let me tell you why sometimes those things fail you're offshore or you're anywhere fishing and that thing fails and it's not putting oil into your gas your motor will blow up so i've heard it so many times with so many people that their engine has blew up because the thing quit putting oil into the gas like it's supposed to it overheated bam so i don't have to worry about that you only have to worry about this anyways if it's a two-stroke but i don't have to worry about that because i disconnected it and i put my oil straight into the gas one other thing i don't have that you want to get is a personal beacon locator i do have the distress signal i showed you on my boat earlier that will immediately call the coast guard but sometimes people fall out the boat or the boat sinks really quick and you don't have time to hit that distress signal So it's always a good idea to get you a personal beacon locator to put on your hip. That way if you fall out the boat or if the boat sinks really fast, you can hit that button and they'll notify the Coast Guard. I think they're like four or $500. I am getting one. I just don't have one yet. But now that I've had this boat for a year or so, um, I don't do any bay fishing anymore. All I want to do is go offshore. So I'm looking for an offshore boat right now and I'll probably be selling this boat soon. I have no use for it. I mean, I don't really go fishing for trout or fishing in the bay or do shallow water. It's all offshore mostly for me. And we're going to keep the bass boat to do bass fishing. But thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions about this or if you have any other videos that you want to see, leave some comments down below or any kind of tutorials or how-to, and I'll go over that stuff. But don't forget to subscribe, and you'll see me fishing again soon.